Привет! Hello, Russia! Yulia Samoylova, the singer who was banned from participating at Eurovision 2017, has been confirmed as Russia's act for 2018 after quite the wait. We should talk about it. Are you guys ready? Let's, Let's do this! this. That is right, the flame is still burning. You can ban her from Eurovision, but Yulia is still gonna bring the heat. She has had to wait for quite some time to get this confirmation. A lot of fans said, oh, Russia's not going to send her, proving that last year was just a big show. Others have said, let the girl go, let the woman go, she deserves to be there. I am curious what you guys think. I think it's obviously like a good thing. She's going all the sort of positive reasons we had last year, you know, the idea of Russia sending a performer who is disabled to show that like it's not uh, a handicap for performing or having a music career or succeeding like that. Um, Flame is burning itself as a song last year, very much fitted into Russia's peace song trend, which can either go terribly well or terribly badly. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, like, this entirely depends on song, but I am put in mind of Polina Gagarina from a couple of years ago because she literally just stood in place on stage and didn't move around for her entire performance of A Million Voices uh, in Vienna. So given sort of that similar anthemic piece pop sound that Russia seems to do so well, I think she might surprise on stage in Lisbon. Um, but again, this totally depends on song because Flame is Burning was not good. So... They perhaps need to revisit who they have writing songs for her. But yeah, generally, why not? It could be a good thing for her and something different for Russia. I'm actually surprised that they stuck with her because as far as I'm concerned, looking at it and looking at it from the outside anyway, it's as if in 2017 it was a deliberate move to aggravate the Ukrainians and to push mm. their boundaries and see what would happen. And then judging by the quality of the song, that it was so below Russia's usually high standards that you kind of say, oh, they must surely be doing this on purpose because this is not Russian standards. So then I was surprised that they brought her back this year because there's no reason to. And let's face it, Russia doesn't have a reputation for being a nice, friendly, mm. pally um, kind of state when you look at the high up people in authority, that they kind of come across that they'll do whatever they will whatever's best to succeed um because julia Simonova, i can't see her with a good song she's very hard to imagine singing a good song like i've only ever heard her sing flame is burning which was dire and i saw her singing Molitva on the x factor and that was okay but like she doesn't have as strong a voice as paulina gagarina and unless they kind of maybe they're going to do kind of go down the route of Salvador Sobral or Spain this year and kind of give her a gentle number because she doesn't have the voice to do a big power ballad. And last year they were trying to do a big power ballad with Flame is Burning and it didn't work. So maybe if it's nice and gentle or something, but we already are getting a lot of nice and gentle songs and I don't know if I can handle another nice and gentle song. So to sum mm -hmm. it all up, I am not excited to see Julia Samilova back at Eurovision. And we should point out that you are not the only one who thought that Russia was using her participation last year to kind of make Ukraine look bad by forcing them to ban her. The EBU thought so as well, and they said this was a propaganda war um, or initiated by Russia, and they fined them or gave them a penalty behind the scenes. We don't know what that penalty was, but I obviously interviewed Fred... What's his name? Oh my god, <laughs> Frederick Dieter Freeling, the head of the EBU reference group. Sorry, it is so late right now. And he said, you know, they were penalized, we're just not making it public. And of course, we all know that Ukraine did get a penalty as well for their, you know, interaction and role in this situation. Mm -hmm. So you're not alone in saying that poor gets kind of been officially confirmed by the EBU. <laughs> Now, look, I'm happy she's singing because she clearly really wants to sing at Eurovision. While she, regardless of what she knew about being a pawn in a broader game, she wanted to go to Eurovision. That we can't deny. She's ambitious. Mm -hmm. She's hungry to hit that stage. And she sincerely loves Eurovision. And, you know, who knows what talks happen behind the scenes. The fact is she's there, so she's fulfilling her wish. So I'm excited for her in that sense. And she has been through a lot. Like, I'm not even talking mm. about her personal situation. I'm talking about in this cycle of Eurovision and last cycle, because people have talked about her nonstop, often in very unflattering terms. And so in a way, she's like, yeah, I suffered through all of that. Of course, I deserve this now. This is my payback for enduring all of that. So again, well done. I think that she could 
find a song, or rather they could craft a song to fit her. They said in an email sent to Weeby Blogs, actually, I spoke with her management to confirm that she had been approached, and she said, initially my husband and I wrote several songs, but in the end we decided to go with a song that someone else wrote. So clearly the songs that they had written were not up to Russia's standards, which suggests that Russia was thinking, okay, we want her to do well, so let's give her a song so she can do well. So in that sense, mm -hmm. I'm hopeful because Russia, when they want to do well, they do do well. And I think they want to do well off the back of last year. So who knows? This could be a big surprise, I think, like Angus said, um, because I think a lot of, there'll be a lot of behind the scenes planning and plotting and thinking. Her enthusiasm will come through. The interesting point to me is that I no longer think of her as the singer from Russia who's in a wheelchair because she's been on the scene in our minds for so long. I now just think her as, of her as Yulia Samoylova, you know, the singer who was banned. And it's funny how th that can happen, right? And I guess it's to the whole point of diversity and what we talk about. The more you see things, the less you kind of think about them. And that's mm. like Conchita Verse. When I see her now, I'm like, oh yeah, bearded drag queen. It doesn't, you don't have a reaction. So I think that's a wonderful thing, actually. And um, finally... There was a bit of discussion that maybe Ukraine would be angry because they're not allowed to broadcast performances of blacklisted artists. We now now know that they will broadcast all of Eurovision, including the Russian singer. You know, because if they decided not to broadcast Eurovision or rather Yulia's performance, imagine the controversy that would stoke. So again, we see Yulia as a good thing because she's helping Ukraine kind of reach a go back to the normality of just broadcasting Eurovision. Do you know what I'm saying? Like. Mm. So in that sense, I'm also happy. But yeah, we got to hear the song. That was a soliloquy. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go around and give our final points. For me, I'd love to hear Yulia sing a non-ballad. I think that would be quite cool. You know, because we know her as a balladeer. Flame is burning. Moli va. I Googled her. She often sings ballads at other events. Give her an upbeat song. The people would not expect that, and it would really shake things up. That is my wish. Angus. I totally disagree. I think if Russia is smart and want to nail it, they will send her with a peace song type ballad because they know how to do them exceptionally well. And even on first listen, the stuff that kind of makes all eye roll and go cheesy performs incredibly well, particularly across Eastern Europe, but like across the board. You saw it with Dina Garapova. We, well, we didn't really see it with the Tolma Chavy twins, but, you know, they had a good go. We saw it with Polina Gagarina. That genre and style Russia does incredibly well. And I think if they're being smart and calculated, they will have picked out a power ballad for her to sing. And um, if there are sort of vocal power issues, they will figure it out. Yeah, I think it has to be a big P style power ballad because that like, yeah, that whole package would just do very well, I think. I think that the only way Yulia Samilova will be remotely exciting, well, at this very moment in time, is if she kind of goes off William was saying and is upbeat and kind of a trap rap number with a few explosions and maybe attach some fireworks to her and come down from the ceiling, something crazy like that. At the moment, if she was to go down a similar vein to um, flame is burning, it's just going to be dull. And maybe the song will be The Flame is Still Burning, and <laughs> it'll have a similar <laughs> message, who knows? Anyways, I'm wishing her the best. That's what we think. What do you think? Is The Flame Still Burning for you and Russia? Do you think Yulia is an automatic qualifier to the final based on Russia's history, or do you think there might be a struggle? Let us know here on Weebly Blogs. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notifications bell. And make sure to leave comments below so that we know all your own thoughts and opinions too. And we'll see you later. Bye. 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 Bye.